Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. Do you believe Elon? He says a lot of things. Sometimes he says things that if are true, it might mean your Tesla holdings may triple in value or maybe quadruple or perhaps even tenfold or more. He even literally says he thinks Tesla will become the most valuable company in the world. Wow, that sounds great if it's true. However, in the past, he has said many things that have turned out not to be so true. FSD was meant to be feature complete some time ago, and more than one occasion he said that. Although Elon feels even more confident it will be ready this year. He also said there'll be a $25,000 compact Tesla, a car that got almost everyone's excitement up as it would have been so affordable when you factor in all the cost savings relative to ICE. But now that looks like it may not be a thing either. And that's what I do. I listen intently to everything Elon says. I even analyze every interview, shareholder meeting, earnings call, and report back to you about what I think it all means. Elon knows the direction of the company better than anyone. He tries not to spill too many beans, but he's given us numbers. And we've seen other numbers in various places like financial statements. From there, we're able to extrapolate forecasts on what Tesla's profits, revenue, production numbers may be in the future if these come into fruition. Now, for those of you who were holding Tesla shares around the time of the Model 3 release, it was a tough time. Tesla was struggling to produce the Model 3 to a decent level of production, let alone one that could generate a net profit. It was a difficult task and something Tesla had never done before. All the naysayers were in full force, telling us that Tesla wouldn't even have the demand, even if they could actually make them. Elon was struggling. It was a very tough time for him. If you recall, he was even sleeping on the factory floor to get this sorted. It was a new experience for him and he had to sort it out. Things didn't go close to how he expected. The stock got hit. It was shorted hard and being manipulated. I was losing a lot of my equity in my investment. And what felt even worse was I'd lost my father even more. And this was his retirement fund that I had convinced him to part with. I was down almost about half of what I'd invested when the stock was at the very bottom. It wasn't a great feeling. I felt that I may as well see it through now. I didn't have any more funds available, but I had the nerve to try and tell my dad to put more in. I couldn't convince him that time, even when the stock dropped below $40. I kept telling myself that these cars were incredible. Although I'd never even driven one at the time, the specs on paper were enough to convince me. And I did everything I could to find out what owners thought of them, reading and watching every review, joining Model 3 owners groups on Facebook, I just had to know. Tesla had built a better mousetrap. It was just better in every way. And then when you compared the price of the Model 3 to a BMW 3 Series, it just seemed like such amazing value. Then when you look at Tesla's financials, it was just going to be a numbers game. Tesla just needed to produce more of these Model 3s and they'll eventually have a positive operating profit. I knew cars well. It was a hobby I enjoyed keeping up to date with. That is past tense. I don't really care about other cars anymore, as Tesla has absolutely obliterated all of them. There's nothing left to get excited about. I only really keep up to date with the EVs now, for comparison's sake. But back then, I knew all the specs of all the equivalent cars, and wow, the Model 3 performance was hitting insane acceleration speeds, and at a very competitive price point. On top of that, it had a range that was extremely practical, and this was before superchargers were everywhere. And remember, this was all before the price increases too. The Model 3 became very affordable at one stage. Tesla had the product. They had the price point. They just needed to make more of them. Eventually, Elon got through production hell. They were doing so much at the time, flying in robots from Europe that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, constructing a massive tent to improve the production line. For those of you who were invested at the time, it's probably bringing back some memories. And then I would look at what SpaceX was achieving too. I would think if this guy can make rockets that land themselves, then surely he can make a car. EVs are the future. And if Tesla could one day produce up to 5 million of them a year, then one day this company is going to be worth a trillion dollars or something due to such massive potential gross profits. We got through it and Elon pulled it off. And yes, all the other fantastically talented, hardworking people at Tesla too, of course. And here we are again today, hearing all these people doubting Tesla and Elon and trying to put us off our investment, reducing our confidence and conviction to buy more, especially when it comes to FSD, not so much 4680s. 
If I was a major Tesla hater, I would probably be trying to convince people more that Tesla is struggling with the 4680 sales and dry battery electrode processes. But no, they want to tell us that Elon is dreaming if he thinks FSD will be ready this year. But these analysts or fund managers or whomever, well, what do they know about FSD? What do they know about neural nets or even AI? Very little. What they do know is it's an extremely insane task to achieve, and they're right. In fact, it is unbelievable. So they can't believe it. I find it hard to believe too. The sheer complexity, the amount of variables possible, or scenarios, let alone edge cases, it's impossible. Yet we're seeing Tesla beta testers driving around with no interventions from one location to another, and not on the easiest roads either. It is absolutely mind-blowing. But that's FSD. It's amazing. But I think at this stage, 4680s are still the main play here. Tesla need production numbers. They need to produce batteries at an insane rate. There are no robotaxis without enough batteries. It comes down to the batteries first, and always has. The 4680 has been designed to be the fastest produced battery cell ever, from entire first principles thinking. The tablet's designed to keep continuous production, and the fact they have a volume about five and a half times the 2170 cell, meaning they need to make five and a half times more 2170 cells just to have the same volume of Jelly Roll. So much thought has gone into these cells. Yes, all right, Tesla has been facing a lot of issues this year, and things haven't gotten off to the best start, but this was far from any easy task and was always gonna be incredibly difficult. Bear in mind how long they've been working on this cell before it was in Texas, in the Kedo Row facility. And yes, China isn't the easiest place to do business right now either, but China needs Tesla as much as Tesla needs China. China can't make close to enough battery cells without Tesla, as no one else can come close to consuming that number of cells. Even the second largest EV manufacturer can't make cars as fast as they can make cells. So BYD is supplying Tesla with their cells too. Tesla's vehicle manufacturing is about six times faster than the next closest, which I think is the BYD Dolphin. Yes, after the latest line upgrades, Tesla's Shanghai Model Y line produces cars at six times that rate. Of course, we expect Berlin and Texas to produce even faster than that again. No other EV manufacturers want to go through production hell themselves yet and have not hit volume production as a result, still to this day. Something Tesla achieved over four years ago. Tesla showed everyone how to do it and even gave away the patents for everything necessary, but that wasn't enough. Yet people still want to tell me that BYD is going to overtake Tesla in BEV production. And so here we are today, still waiting for the 4680 sales to hit high volume production by the sounds of what will most likely be sometime in Q4, just like how Tesla hit volume production on the Model 3. It set the path for Tesla's stock price to level up, especially when it got a boost from the best-selling Model Y. We're at that point again with Tesla, where we just want to see what level the 4680 production can hit. Oh, and also the actual specs on the 4680 too. At least, like I was saying with the Model 3, we had the specifications and they were outstanding. Well, what are the specs gonna be on the 4680? I wish I knew. Although Jordan from The Limiting Factor thinks he might get them in a few weeks. Brilliant YouTube channel, by the way. This is just the tough part of investing, the waiting to see bit. And you need to feed yourself with confirmation biases and remind yourself of these absolutely incredible feats that Tesla and Elon have achieved in the past. Remind ourselves that all the best engineers in the world want to work for SpaceX or Tesla. Watch FSD beta videos of people testing it and seeing how the cars can drive themselves. I'm confident they'll achieve it. And even if 4680s don't hit high volume production until the end of next year, it's just about equally as incredible as it paves the path to the next stock price level up. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.